Curvature is a measure of how sharply a curve bends. In this figure here, we have two different points, point P and point Q. Which point would have the higher curvature? Does the graph look like it's curved more at P or at Q? So if you guessed P, you would be correct. The graph curves a lot more at P than Q. So the curvature for P would be higher than Q. If we have a vector value function, then we can calculate the curvature by calculating the rate of change of the magnitude of the unit vector with respect to the arc length s. In previous sections, we were calculating the arc length s. You might remember that that process could be quite involved. So now that we're looking at the curvature, we'll have to do everything we did to find arc length s and then uh, a little bit more. So here's the definition of curvature. Let C be a smooth curve in the plane or space given by R of s, where s is the arc length parameter. The curvature k at different values of s is given by this formula here. The greater the value of k, the greater the curvature. So in order to find the curvature, uh, there's a number of steps that you're gonna have to go through. These problems are not short problems at all. We're actually gonna look at a number of different ways to find curvature. There can be a faster way to find curvature. We start with some R of t. This is your vector value function. You first want to find r prime of t. That's the derivative of the vector value function. And then you want to find the magnitude of the derivative of the vector value function. Next, we can find s of t, which is the integral from a to t of the magnitude of the vector value function. Then once you find the s of t, you can solve for s and plug that back into r. This will give you r of s. This is the vector value function in terms of s. So far, these are all steps that we did in the previous section. Next, we would find r prime of s. This is the derivative of the vector value function in terms of s. Then we can find capital T of s. This is the unit tangent vector in terms of s. That would be r prime of s divided by the magnitude of r prime of s. We then want to take the derivative of t. This would give us the rate of change of the unit tangent vector in terms of s. Finally, we could find k, which is the magnitude of t prime of s. We're given r of t, and then there's eight steps after that in order to calculate k. So here's how we find curvature. We're given r of t, and we can see that our first step is to find r prime of t. As I'm doing r prime of t, I'm going to put this in component form. You don't have to. You could leave it in linear combination form if you want to. So my x component is the 3t. That's what's in front of the i. So the derivative of 3t would be 3. My y component is 4t. That's what's in front of the j. And the derivative of 4t is 4. So that step is done. Next, I need to find the magnitude of r prime of t. So that's going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 16 is 25, root 25 is 5. So we have found the magnitude of r prime of t. Next, we want to find s of t, which is the integral from a to t of the magnitude of r prime of t. If we're given an interval for this, let's say if they said that t was on the interval of 4 to 8. If that were the case, we would set our a equal to the lower bound. But for this problem, we weren't given an interval at all. If you don't have an interval, just go ahead and set a equal to 0. So now we want to find s of t, which is going to be the integral from a, which we're using 0, all the way up to t of the magnitude of r prime of t, which is 5 dt. So the antiderivative of 5 is going to be 5t, and the boundaries for that are from 0 to t. Replace the t with t minus 0, that's the upper boundary minus the bottom boundary, and then that's just equal to 5t. So what we can do is just take s and set that equal to 5t, and now we can solve for t. So t would equal to s over 5. 
Now we have found S of T or S. And next we want to plug S into the R function. So then R of S, and I'm going to write this in component form, would be 3 times T. And T we need to solve for as S divided by 5. And then the Y component was 4T. Instead of a T, I have S over 5. This would be 3S over 5, comma, 4S over 5. So we have found R of S. Next, we want to take the derivative of that. So R prime of S would be 3 fifths, comma, 4 fifths. Next, we're finding capital T of S, which is R prime of S divided by the magnitude of R prime of S. We haven't done that yet, so I'll just do that in line of the equation. So T of S would be 3 fifths, comma, 4 fifths, div divided by the magnitude of that. So that's the square root of 3 fifths squared plus 4 fifths squared. And I get 3 fifths, comma, 4 fifths. 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. Then the denominator is just going to be 1, so this is going to be equal to 3 fifths, comma, 4 fifths. That is our T of S done. Next, we can find T prime of S. Since we have a constant for both the X and the Y components, that means that both of those guys are just going to go to 0. So we get 0, comma, 0. So there's T prime of S done. And then finally, our value of k, which is the curvature, is going to be the magnitude of t prime of s. And then finally, our value of k, which is the curvature of r of t, is going to be the magnitude of t prime of s. So k is equal to magnitude of t prime of s. So that's going to be the square root of 0 squared plus 0 squared equals 0. Think for a moment what do you think a k of 0 means. So to help determine what a k of 0 is, let's graph this vector value function. Even though the vector value function is in 2D, I'm using the 3D grapher just to prove a point, that you can graph something in the 3D grapher but just realize that your curve is only going to exist on the xy plane. If you want to see what that would look like in 2D, just make the z-axis point directly at you, and then the red line, the x-axis, make that point to the right. And that's what your graph would look like on a normal two-dimensional graphing surface. We can see that this vector value function is a straight line, and it is always a straight line. So any point that would calculate the curvature for this would be zero. If you have k equals zero, that means there is no curve whatsoever. Example two, find the curvature of a circle with a radius of four. Go ahead and try this one on your own. So pause the video, see what you can get, and I'll show the solution to this in the next video.